Oh, hello there! Welcome to my channel. We'll talk about anything you could issue and motivation about that. And if you might like my videos, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe button for many videos to come. Now, let's talk about the index aside from the glycemic index, the glycemic index, which I have already discussed on the video linked above, and I also attach it in the description down below. And as always, I have a disclaimer here I am not a physician, I am not a doctor but i have taken my diet to a level that i am still in good health in good condition and maintaining my weight after taking weight loss diet i do it by meticulously tracking my results that's why if you have a dream of having the body you always wanted to have then you come to the right channel and that friend is my mission so anyways to the video as we all know glycemic index is what rank foods from 1 to 100 based on their effect on blood sugar levels they are usually in per 100 gram basis and to have the glycemic load that is just multiplying the glycemic index by the weight of that food on the other note the insulin index of food represents the insulin response or the elevation of the insulin concentration in the blood during the two hour period after the food is ingested so as in the difference the insulin index is way more useful than the glycemic index all because of certain food according to an article that i link in the description down below is that lean meats causes an insulin response despite the fact that they contain very low amount of carbohydrates so if you may ask what is insulin it is the hormone created by our pancreas it allows the body to use the sugar or the glucose from the foods we eat or from the carbohydrates so if your insulin is activated your body or your skin or any parts will absorb the sugar and if you have that excess sugar or glucose intake you will have that excess body fat and as a note the link of insulin is that continuous hungry feeling that you want to avoid in your diet specifically in the no eating time so if you want to avoid a lot of mishap in your diet you must avoid a lot of insulin response so now then Ray how can we know the insulin index Food. Good news, an article that clearly and visually explains regarding the insulin index practically according to the article that the carbohydrates has a large impact on the insulin. Well, that's really a given already. So anyways, because the article says that protein intake can also incite insulin response. If you want to read the article, I will link it on the description down below. But anyways, I'll explain it now. The article stated the following equation. Insulin load is equivalent to the carbohydrates minus the fiber plus 56% of protein. And the unit of this insulin equation is in grams. So for example, I have a rice of 200 grams or one cup of cooked rice. Now rice has a 57 grams of carb, zero fiber, and proteins of 5 grams. So the insulin load is equivalent to 57 minus zero plus 56% of the protein which is 5 grams so we have now 59.8 grams now you may ask me so what are the parameters of right insulin load so hear me now the insulin load varies from person to person say a small woman aiming for weight loss using a lower protein ketogenic diet can have as low as 40 grams of insulin load per day while in the contrary a larger and active male and looking build muscle has an insulin load of over 300 grams per day. Why then the high insulin load for bodybuilders? Well, because they are actively using the protein for muscle development. On the contrary, if you eat a lot of protein and just sit in your couch all day for a month, that will be some serious increase in fat or body fat. Once you incite the muscles in bodybuilding or exercises, the muscles will create micro tears and because of that, the proteins will be used to replenish the torn muscles. If you incite the breakdown through exercise, only the fat will be used as burning process if you are in a keto diet perhaps or any high fat diet with a protein intake enough for the bodybuilding. So anyways, as a basis of what you can have, what insulin load you can have per day. So I have a height of 
5 feet and 6 and a half inches or equivalent to 168.9 centimeters so the insulin load that works for me is 150 to 200 grams per day well women typically have a lower insulin load well that is to incite weight loss so the article says that one woman ranges from 75 to 80 grams per day so now imagine the rise you calculated early it has 59.8 grams so say this say if you eat rice from breakfast lunch and until dinner that would be a whopping 179 grams of insulin load per day not to mention the other sweets you eat it may rise up to until 300 grams so if you eat a lot of carbs such as rice don't expect to lose weight that's a lot of insulin response and excess fat so anyways i am giving you a list of some foods and their insulin loads so here is the list First is the rice of 1 cup, as we computed we have 59.8 grams, the oats of 90 grams, 62 grams of insulin load, apple 250 grams, 29 grams of insulin load, of pork chop, 40 grams, we have insulin load of 6, same as avocado of 157 grams, 6 grams of insulin load, potato of 100 grams, as 20 grams of insulin load, an egg of 55 grams, as 4 grams of insulin load, Drumstick chicken with no breading at 72 grams of 8 grams of insulin load. A drumstick with breading and fried in oil of 80 grams has 11 grams of insulin load. Anyways, please you can expand this table by using the formula that I discussed earlier. The total insulin load is equivalent to total carbohydrates minus the fiber it has plus 56% of protein. We use this and for every food you eat, tally the insulin load correspondingly and add it. By that, you can say that you ate the right amount of food or the right amount of quality based ultimately in your goal. So to end this video, let me give these pointers as a close. If your blood glucose and insulin levels are high, then you should work to decrease the insulin load of your diet. As the insulin load of your diet decreases, you should see your blood glucose levels come down, your appetite reduce, and your ketone levels comes up. So remember that ketones are the energy, that energy that are burned from the body fat, which is more efficient than the energy we get from food. So next, if you're still not seeing results that you want, then the next step is to try the intermittent fasting. That is to further reduce the insulin and blood glucose as well as mitigate overall food intake. So number four, as your blood glucose level starts to normalize, you can start to focus on more nutrient-dense foods with a lower energy density that may be helpful if weight loss is your goal. So that's it guys. Well, as I said again, Dieting and nutrition are always one. You should not overlook the other. And with insulin load, you can be more precise on your weight loss diet. So anyways, this is all for this video. Use the insulin load in your diets for you to have a weight loss and a more accurate diet. That's all for now guys. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button for many videos to come. As always, eat better, track them better, and be better. This is right.